Okay, so welcome again to the Automating GIS Processes course. You should have now seen the um, this uh, session is being recorded button. If that's not the case, please let me know. But now we are recording. Um, I could reintroduce myself briefly. So my name is Wokko Hagenheimo. I'll be hosting this um, uh, this part of the Automating GIS Processes course now for the seven weeks. Uh, so let's let's get started. Um, you should be now seeing the front page of the course that has now been updated. Uh, and as mentioned, this course is tightly related to the GeoPython course. So if uh, you haven't been studying much Python before, uh, I recommend that you browse through uh, also this uh, GeoPython course contents and also will be referring back to this, uh, this page uh, often when proceeding with, uh, with this course uh, now in this second teaching period. Uh, for today, uh, it's indeed the first lesson, so I will give a brief overview of the course and the learning goals. Uh, and a bit of a recap for the course environment, how things are organized. Uh, and then we will have a short hands-on programming session where we actually start working with uh, geometric objects. Uh, so we plan to have a little break, break then before the actual programming part. A uh, few words about the web pages. So, you can see the main contents here on the left side. I will then update uh, the lesson materials uh, here each week on before the lessons on Tuesdays. Some of you have might have seen the older course versions, so they exist. They are all online, but uh, this year there have been quite big updates in well pandas and geopandas. So we'll be doing maybe bigger updates on the course materials this year. So you are of course free to check the older course materials if you're eager to uh, go forward, but I recommend that we proceed all uh, in the same, same pace. Uh, and then always, if you click on some of these pages, for example, the course environment page, that will be useful. So then on the right hand side, you can see the contents of the particular page for navigation. So those, those are the technical elements of this uh, course web page. Mm. But let's start from here under lesson one, lesson overview. Uh, and indeed, uh, today I'll give a kind of general overview of the whole course, and then we'll go into this uh, lesson. And before going to any technicalities, I will give this kind of a non-technical introduction using just a regular slideshow. Uh, which should summarize some of these basic uh, basic information for this course and related to the grading grading and so on. So this is a five uh, credit point course uh, tightly related to the uh, course organized in the first period. So this is actually the first year that these are two separate courses. It used to be one one ten credit course uh, still last year. Mm. And indeed, the contents are also uh, very much related to each other. Uh, the course team, oops, it's a bit tricky. Uh, you can see the faces in here. So I mentioned Henrik Tenkanen, he's kind of the father of this course, been developing most of the course materials. And then I have joined uh, uh, in the past past few years also developing the materials further and now giving the lessons. So Henrik is currently an assistant professor uh, at the Aalto University in the department of the built environment, but still also act actively developing uh, the course contents uh, in the background. And me, Henrik and Dave are actually going to develop these materials into a book, uh, which I'll mention also later on. Mm. Great. Uh, and indeed, my name is Pokko Hegenheimo. I'm 
a PhD student here uh, at the University of Helsinki. And I've been using Python actively since starting my PhD four years ago. Uh, then we have Emil Enström, who's still maybe online. Emil, if you want to introduce yourself, so please do. <laughs> Hello, I'm, I'm Emil. Uh, yeah, I'll be going through your exercises and I'll see you guys in the exercise sessions. Master students in geoinformatics. Yeah. Yep. Great to have Emil here. I think Sonia is not online, but indeed Sonia is the other uh, course assistant. So you will be meeting Emil and Sonia in the practical sessions and on Slack, and they will be grading the weekly exercises. Uh, Yep. So if you have any questions, you can contact me, Emil or Sonia. Uh, and as mentioned, uh, best to post the questions on the public channels in Slack. Uh, this is just copy paste from the course description. Um, but to summarize the over, overall goal of this course, so we will learn uh, geo, geospatial data analysis using, using Python. So basics of programming continuing from GeoPython and then applying these uh, programming skills to solving geographical questions and automating these GIS processes workflows. And then a central uh, goal of this course is also to continue, learn, continue learning good programming practices, including version control and documenting and communicating your code and the analysis workflow. Uh, using GitHub, using Git, uh, using Markdown, uh, and so on. So the point is that we write code that works and that the computer can read, and also code that people can read and understand your logic. Mm. All right. Uh, learning goals, uh, just to summarize, so what you will be evaluated based on basically at the end is that you can write Python code. Uh, modular code refers to the fact that you would be at least using functions. So to make the code efficient, not to repeat yourself if not necessary. Uh, so and then to manage spatial data, data in general and spatial data in particular uh, using Python. So reading and writing data, reprojections, re reclassifications, uh, and so on. So this data manipulation side, then uh, you should uh, learn how to apply spatial analysis methods. Uh, so for example, buffering, overlay analysis, network analysis, these basic, the basic stuff in a way that you can do in any GIS software. Then you learn to create visualizations. So both spatial and aspatial graphs uh, that we learned uh, last well two weeks ago and then maps both static and interactive maps using python and then uh, related to the final assignment especially so the kind of ultimate goal is to really really to automate a geographical data analysis workflow document it well make it make it so that you could then for example repeat it to different different years or different input data to make make the uh, process transparent and repeatable. So th those are the main learning goals of, of this course combined with the GeoPython course. Uh, and then there's a note about these kind of generic skills that you learn. So of course, not all of us will go on to be software engineers or even data scientists, but I'm sure that this course is super useful for everybody, especially studying geography. So you learn to search for information, read documentation, apply new methods. Mm, uh, so understand the kind of structure of this particular programming language. Be critical about the tools you're applying. So if you're using a desktop GIS and pressing some buttons, what does it actually do? So here we actually write down the whole recipe and all the, all the steps. And then, then also to be critical that, okay, the process works, but does it do the job? correctly. Mm. Then these good programming practices, version control. Uh, and then maybe even most importantly, to communicate the analysis workflow to really to be able to say that what what is this 
uh, research based on what is the analysis based on and communicate the work so that others could take your code and maybe use it as well. Uh, and then, well, this is maybe my favorite part. As you might have noticed, I always do things just before the very final deadline. Um, so that's also one of the, I put it here as one of the learning goals. Uh, so we have deadlines uh, to keep things organized. There's 50 students. So only way we can actually manage this course is that if everybody submits on time, so we can then efficiently uh, uh, assess assess your submissions, but it's also for you as a tool to learn to manage your time uh, and to plan a bit ahead uh, when, when now managing this course and you must have also other courses. Of course, we, this is a challenging time and if you have good reasons to submit things late, we will be of course un understanding that, but we hope that you are able to plan, plan your time so that you can complete the, complete the assignments on time. Okay, um, well, here's just the central links um, will be going through soon. So for those four of you who are new here, it might be a bit confusing at start. We have the website, we have GitHub, we have Slack, we have notebooks. So there's uh, quite a few places we are uh, using when working with the exercises and the lessons, but there's there are good reasons for that. And one of them is that, for example, GitHub, it's a real world uh, collaborative environment for developing code. So it's really useful for you to learn that. Uh, Slack as well, it's used uh, in many organizations also in the real world. Um, and then the CSC notebooks indeed allows us to work in a cloud computing environment. So we don't have to spend time uh, installing things on 50 computers. Of course, you can install install the software if you like. But this um, website, that's the central hub for everything. And all the uh, necessary information should be on the websites. Um, and the websites have quite a good search uh, functionality. So use that actively. Mm. OK, so then to the actual topics, what will we uh, be learning uh, in practice? So today we have uh, a rather short lesson about geometric objects. So we will learn how to represent points, lines, and polygons in Python using the Shapely module. Then we'll go on to using GeoPandas. So it's a, an extension to Pandas that we learned um, during GeoPython. So we learn to read and write data, um, manage projections, uh, and so on. Then we'll do some geocoding, spatial queries in week three. Week four will be about reclassifying an overlay analysis and something else probably. Then week five is the fun one with maps. So we'll be doing static maps, PNG images and interactive maps that you can then put on your website if you want. Uh, and then week six is about OpenStreetMap data and network analysis. Um, as a kind of case example of spatial analysis techniques. Uh, and that's most of it. Then for the final week seven, uh, I'm planning just to reserve it for revision. If you have some questions or if we haven't had time to cover some topics or some technical tricks, and then we will start working with the final assignment. So that will be, I think that will be on the 8th of December on a Tuesday, this one. Uh, and then they, there will be, I'll share them quite soon. So we have some extra materials for self-study related to raster processing and uh, using Python in QGIS. Uh, myself, I have worked quite a lot with raster data, but I haven't now since my Python career been using it much. So I don't see added value of me talking through the raster materials. But if you are interested, you can then, of course, for example, do your final assignment related to the raster. Uh, raster tools. Mm -hmm. Okay, um, that's most of it. Then I have I have a couple of slides uh, just for motivation. I might scroll through them rather quickly, but at this point, 
I would want to give the opportunity to you to ask if there's something about um, something related to the course topics as such. I'll talk about the grading, still talk about grading uh, a bit after this presentation, but yeah. Okay, no questions, at least in the chat. Uh, maybe in Slack, no. Okay, so I'll just proceed. Uh, okay, so just a couple of examples to give you some something concrete. What, what can you actually imagine doing uh, in Python related to GIS analysis. And of course, there's, if you just go to Twitter or the internet, so you'll find super cool stuff that might have been done uh, using some of these packages that we're, we're, we will be learning um, during this course. But I wanted to show, I'll show one example where I have been involved and then two master's theses. As most of you are uh, bachelor or master's students, um, in geography. So Python is really something that you could think of using in your master's thesis if the topic is such that it, for example, in, involves a lot of data or even for a smaller uh, data analysis process, you could then document it and automate it in, in Python. So this is something something you could think, think of already now, even if you don't have a thesis topic yet. Uh, so the first example is related to um, a paper uh, published, let's scroll, scroll down a bit. Last year, actually, only it was quite a long, long process. Uh, but in this paper, we analyzed uh, global uh, kind of global hotspots of unsustainable co commercial harvesting of species, which might mean hunting or other other threats uh, caused by humans to vulnerable, vulnerable or endangered species. Uh, so this is a paper led by my PhD supervisor, uh, Enrico Di Minin, and this is actually the work where how I kind of started uh, to get involved with Python. So this map shows one of the outputs of the analysis, but what has gone into that analysis is thousands and thousands and thousands of species range maps. So there, there was a layer for each species in the world, basically. And in this uh, analysis, then uh, we included uh, threatened species. But we, um, we did process uh, even many more layers. So we automated some of the kind of pre-processing of this complicated analysis workflow using Python. Um, and it was basically, in, it involved, um, it was polygon data as input. So we rasterized it and then created these kind of uh, different, different levels of uh, aggregation. So we uh, generalized the data and so on, and then, then did further calculations. So it was quite a simple process, but it would have taken like, it would have been impossible to do this job without uh, an automatic process behind. Uh, and, and how we did it, it was actually, we were using tools from ArcGIS, which is familiar to some of you, uh, and Python 2.7, which is already like super old. So this was in back in 2016. So we had a script. Uh, actually, somebody had already written the script and my job was to modify it a bit and run it, uh, run it for all these uh, thousands and thousands and thousands of species, uh, then to get the outputs. So there, eventually the steps that we automated was some some kind of subsetting so there might be a species with subspecies subspecies in the same layer then we would split those up uh, rasterize them and then do this uh, different uh, different sized layers for that mm. so those of you who now are familiar with uh, python let's see if this link link opens so Oops, yeah, so indeed we are not using ArcGIS or ArcPy tools in this course, uh, but if you ever end up doing so, you can find quite nice, uh, quite nice documentation. I won't accept cookies. So there's some kind of um, function name 
we have learned to define functions. Then there are some parameters, uh, and they are all described in here. So this is basically the same thing that that is available then in the desktop version of Arc GIS. Uh, how can I go back to my presentation? I haven't really practiced that. Mm. Let's go here. Uh, yep. Okay, so, so just to summarize this example, the motivation for automating the process was the massive amount of data. And then of course, documenting and doing it uh, efficiently and in a systematic way. And at that time, probably the process had been developed just in desktop ArcGIS and then automated using Python. And now, as some of you might know, of course, ArcMap will uh, cease to exist in a couple of years. And then nowadays, if you would be automating ArcGIS processes, you would be using ArcGIS Pro and Python 3. I haven't used that at all, so don't ask me questions about it, but I'm sure you can find good documentation online if you happen to have some ArcGIS process, particularly that you want to automate. That said, in this course, we will be only using open source uh, GIS packages developed uh, in Python and we'll be using Python 3. Uh, but yeah, so this is this is how this is my very first Python script ever. I had been using R before actually uh, starting to use Python uh, and some Java. Uh, then these uh, master's thesis examples, actually both of these students have been course assistants uh, in the AutoGIS Auto course. Uh, maybe not a coincidence. So this uh, is a screenshot from Helsingin Sanomat uh, that featured Herta's thesis. Was it a bit more than a year ago? And in short, uh, Herta created an algorithm that kind of creates these um, school districts uh, based on data that they are they, they are more optimal let's say than these kind of administrative polygons so it somehow somehow optimizes different uh, different socioeconomic variables uh, available probably in grid cells or something so if you want to have a closer look there's a link to the thesis and then link to the uh, code on github so this is an example of an excellent uh, master's thesis, which was then implemented in Python, and then the code was shared openly online. Mm. Then another example uh, from related to work done in our research group. So master's thesis by Samuli Massinen from last year as well. Uh, so Samuli used Twitter data uh, to analyze cross-border cross -border movements uh, in the Luxembourg region. We could actually have a quick look at the code repository, which is in here. Uh, it's under our research group's uh, organization at GitHub. Mm, so there's some documentation uh, or kind of table of contents for this repository. Uh, and then let's say maybe in here. So here's the home detection algorithm. Um, country detection. So there's some Python script files. Uh, so you can see that Samuli is, for example, she is using pandas, geopandas, and then some modules for inputs and outputs, probably. Uh, and then it then it goes goes forward. So if you're interested, you can also have a look at this uh, this uh, repository for for an example. And I apologize. I again need to do this to get back to my presentation and then scroll down. Uh, okay, so that was another example of, of Python being used in, uh, in a Gradu, Pro Gradu master's thesis work. And I think many of you are probably participating in this accessibility and uh, mobility modeling course by my colleagues. Uh, so if you are super excited about that topic, you can then, for example, develop the final coursework around those questions using Python 
And of course, then if you if you are or want to do um, your master's thesis in those topics, so it's then there's good synergy to use this course as a starting point for uh, thinking about the analysis part of your thesis, uh, just as an advertisement. Uh, then, uh, as I started with ArcGIS, I want to finish up with uh, QGIS. So, uh, as mentioned, so Python is integrated in um, many desktop GIS softwares and can be used to, uh, for example, build plugins. Um, so, last year we had Tatu uh, giving a presentation about this GeoCubes, mm, GeoCubes plugin uh, he developed. Uh, developed uh, at the, what is it in English, Na National, National Land Survey of Finland. And we have the lesson video uh, from last year as, a, as this extra self-study material, if you want to have a look and get started with building plugins, your own plugins in um, QGIS. So QGIS has this kind of high QGIS. So what is it kind of this own, um, own syntax for uh, interacting with the graphical user interface and some of the QGIS tools that requires a bit of bit of studying. Uh, okay, so that's that was some of the main introduction and motivation for the course from this PowerPoint presentation. Um, I'll move back to the course page. Let's see in here. Um, maybe two slides I hadn't updated there that I had planned to talk about. Firstly, um, maybe grading. Uh, so we will have six exercises related to the six lessons that we have. Uh, and those are part of completing the course. So you need to complete, well, basically you need to complete all the exercises and then there will be a final assignment and the final grading goes so that 60% uh, of the final grade, so more weight will be on the final assignment and then a bit less than half uh, will be on the weekly exercises. So thinking, thinking about it, you can't pass the course if you only complete the weekly exercises. You have to submit at least something for the final assignment if you want to get a one out of five. Uh, and then basically, basically your grade will be uh, based on the final assignment because if you have complete, if you participate in the course, in the lessons, if you really do the exercises, I expect that everybody will do a rather good job with the weekly exercises and help will be available. So the point of the weekly exercises is for you to learn. So it's a tool for learning uh, as you don't learn Python by me talking to you here, you will learn Python by actually working on the problems and solving the things yourself. So most of the course, even though the lessons are long, most of the course work will be uh, happening while you work on these weekly exercises and then the final assignment. All right. Uh, and then maybe it's a bit early, but I already kind of planned for the final assignment. Uh, we'll, I'll introduce it a bit later, but I plan to have two deadlines. So first deadline would be by the end of the year, 31st of December, it's a Thursday. So before the new year's uh, is the first deadline. Feel free to submit earlier if you want, but I doubt that many of you will submit before Christmas. That's unlikely. Uh, second deadline will be on the 15th of December. Uh, so it's a Friday and just before the third teaching period starts. So you can choose either of these deadlines, either end of December or mid January. Both are fine. You can aim for the highest grade with both deadlines. But the point there is that, of course, it's also a good idea to plan to have a um, winter holiday. And if you then aim for the later deadline, you can actually have a break during Christmas and New Year's time and then 
finalize the exercise after after the new year in January. But of course, some of you might want to complete this now uh, in December. So that's totally fine. If you submit earlier, then you'll of course, of course get the feedback earlier. So I plan to uh, grade the final assignments into two blocks. Mm. So that's the plan. And we'll discuss more about the final exercise in a couple of weeks. Do you have some questions about the grading or final exercise? No. OK. Um, Excellent. Uh, I'll go over a couple of points and then I think we will have a little break before we go into the hands on Python, Python lesson, which is not super long. Uh, so we have reserved time until, well, six o'clock, but I'm sure, sure or we'll try to finish well on time, at least today. Uh, uh, grading, what else had I planned to mention? Mm. On the course web pages, there's nothing new in a way. Otherwise, uh, you can check best way, best place to check the schedule is always in web body, but you can see it also in here. Maybe now we are ready to start talking about the course environment. So most of you know how things are or organized, but just a little recap. Uh, of the main points. So indeed, uh, the, as we will move on to the lesson, uh, there are a couple of ways in which you can turn the web pages interactive. Uh, so I'll show those later. But by default, um, we will be working in this uh, CSC notebooks environment. Uh, so those of you who are joining us now should complete the steps in this info box. So you should log in at notebooks.csc.fi and then join this GeoPython course in the account tab. All right. So you can maybe do that during the break if you haven't yet done so. Uh, and then over at CSC Notebooks. So if you click here, uh, you should see then I have created new blueprints. So in the first teaching period, we were using this GeoPython or GeoPython Lite. Uh, so in this course, we will be using this uh, AutoGIS uh, blueprint. There's again two options. So this one is linked to the same persistent storage at CSC. So you should see all your files in there uh, when you launch the instance. Uh, so you can, you can do it now, as I see some of you doing. In case things are not working, so then we have this uh, light version, which then will destroy all your files after six hours, right? Uh, so good thing to remember always to, well, using Git, commit and push your changes to GitHub, or if things are somehow super messed up, you can always download your files. Uh, so it's important that you don't lose, lose your work if you have been working a long time with some exercise. So for this lesson today, you could go to CSC Notebooks. If you haven't joined the group, do it in the account tab in here. Um, and then from the dashboard, you can then launch this uh, AutoGIS instance. Uh, and when things have worked as they should, uh, you should see, actually, I'll maybe close this. You should see something like this. Uh, and in the root folder, you will see a new folder called AutoGIS. Okay. So the materials from the first teaching period will be under these files in here. And then you should go inside AutoGIS notebooks. And there you'll, you will find these lesson notebooks. Uh, and this is the Lesson one, uh, Jupyter Lab, Jupyter Notebook that we will then start working with right after the break. So you could now uh, launch your instances, check that you find the files. Uh, and if you have any questions, you can then post them to the chat on Zoom or then 
uh, over at Slack, either or. Mm, I think we are then ready. If there's anything else to note. Mm, maybe final point about installing Python. So if you want to work, have tools on your own computer, it's totally possible. Uh, you can follow these instructions here. And as mentioned in my information message, I'm planning to come to the exercise session this Friday to show especially how this Python GIS environment can be set up. So if you want to do that, uh, well, feel free to read the documentation on your own. Uh, but I will be there on Friday at half past noon uh, showing it. I can also record it. And if, if everything goes well, I can then share the recording somewhere online for those who can't make it on Friday. OK, mm, so maybe, maybe there was this there is this motivation for the course page which covers maybe some of the points that I just said. I won't be reading it true. Maybe here's a nice motivational map. We'll be, this is actually done with Bokeh. We'll be using Folium later on. But you can read, read more information about to motivate yourself further um, for, this, for this course. Mm, maybe one point that I, I, was, I often get asked, that's why Python, not R? I know some of you use R uh, in your research or in your studies, and I guess there was even an R course earlier today. Some of you might have participated in that. So I can share some, some, <laughs> some nice memes about R versus Python. For me, the reason for, for using Python is that it's being used in my research group. And also, we work with large files. So Python is maybe at least used to be more efficient. Uh, and then what I used R for, that was mainly data analysis. I didn't use the geo kind of GIS packages in R, which are probably also good. So it's a bit like comparing, should I play the violin or the cello? You can play the same song, but maybe the violin can go a bit higher. So in, in a nutshell, Python is efficient. And especially in these kind of machine learning uh, applications, that is the go-to tool nowadays. It's super popular. But then what to choose for your own research? It might depend on what your research group uses, what your colleagues use, uh, if you find some existing script in one language, language or the other. So it's not about the language, really. It's about what you want to do with these tools. And some of the processes you can auto automate either in Python or R or in something else. But Python is an excellent tool for automating GIS processes. So with that, um, let's have a break. And indeed, uh, go and launch your CSC Notebooks instance. Your screen should look something like this after the break. If you have some problems, please uh, post a message uh, on the chat or in Slack. So I'll check those before we start. And let's continue at half past sharp uh, then with the first hands-on lesson all right okay so see you see you in a bit <laughs> 